We covered it yesterday. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to Hump Day. Ted, did you bring your hump? I got a hump. Humpty hump. Humpty hump. Do the humpty hump. hump. Anyways, it's a fantastic day in cannabis markets. They continue to fall deeper and deeper into the red. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. We're going to talk a little bit more about esports, one of the sectors that is yeah. rapidly approaching. Everybody's looking around going, great. Nice sector, nice idea. Who's making money? How are we going to make any money out of this? Who knows? We're going to show you how that's done. We're going to start a new show called Midas Letter New Wave Esports Show. That's coming up on every other Friday. And Dan Miter, who's the CEO of Mitri, New Wave Esports. Mitri. Mitri? Mitri. It's not Miter? No, you're thinking of Miter Saw because you're, yeah. you're, you're, I know. I'm a carpenter. Yeah. Now that I've got a farm, I'm no, a carpenter. Dan, Dan's not a carpenter. Dan's a... Mitri. Mitri. Yeah. As in Dimitri. As in Dimitri, but he's a Remitri. He's a Remitri. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have some fun with that. We have news happening today. The news nurse of the day will be Laura McCallum, as per usual. Um, we have Peter Dazzler here from Canalaska Uranium. Now, I don't know if you've been following the uranium story globally, but uh, there is increasing um, lobbying for more reactors because of the low ecological impact and the zero emissions. Nothing good go wrong. Nothing can go wrong with uranium. Unless, of course, you're a sea yeah. urchin at the bottom do you, of Do you the know that, that Russia uh, built a floating reactor yeah. and they've sent it up to Siberia yeah. and it's going to, it's going to uh, be supply all the energy for one city? Right. Now, China is about to do the same thing. Now, Peter Basler is a, a fountain of information. Right. And we we're talking about all these different things. So there is, you know, the nuclear, electrical, and, and he's, they also have a great, well, we're going to see it later, but they have a great uh, nickel properties in, in Manitoba. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Nickel is, as you probably aren't aware, is, uh, you know, it's looking a little scarce. Yeah. Did you know that France, 90% of France's electrical power is generated yeah. from uranium? No, I knew that. Did yeah. you know that? Did yeah. you tell me that today? I just told you. <laughs> well, there so you that, go. That's your trick. Hey, I, I tell you something that, that you I don't know, that. and you come back and tell me well, and act like I'm, and like you, I'm the one that's... And you're like, geez, I didn't know that. Well, no, that's news to else? me. You know what? I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what else I don't know. And I'm thinking, I, I'll just ask James, what don't I know? Well, that's, I've stopped buying novels because now I just go through my shelf at home and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look familiar. And then I'll get yeah. three quarters of the way through it and realize that I have, in fact, read it before because I know yeah, it's Yeah, but if you, if you have read it and you don't remember what you read, well, then it's you, like you reading read it again. again. It's Absolutely. a brand new story. It's like watching the same film twice when you can't remember the ending. I, I do that all the time. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, what else is going on today? Uh, well, well, a big significant well, development in the S and P today. I think. Yes, we. Yes. So the S and P has suffered significant technical damage, both according to Ed Molesky here, and also according to Dmitry the Berezaitsev, yeah. who uh, is communicating and, with me and telling me exactly that. So it was hilarious. Just after you said, there's been some serious technical damage done to the S&P, he actually texted me that same thing, and I was like, are you guys actually... Well, where do you think I got that from? Oh. No, no I didn't. No, no, and I'll show you why if you want, right now. Um, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe later in the show. Maybe we'll get later. to that a little later on the show. Okay. Uh, yesterday, we were at RavenQuest Biomed's uh, Orbital Garden Facility in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, let me tell you that this is one of the most mind-blowing things I've ever seen. They take these little clones, they stick them in these orbital garden trays, and eight weeks later, that little clone has grown into one bud. But almost every single part of that bud is like premium dried flower because there's only a few leaves sticking out of the bud. It's been bud from the moment it was born. It was born bud. It's bud born. Did it, was it born with a bud or was it bud? I was born butless. with a plastic was it butless? spoon. No, it wasn't buttless. It was bud. Budless. Buddy. Buttless, like buttless chaps. <laughs> I'm going to get a horse and wear buttless chaps. Butt, li butt lips. Butt lips. Butt lips chaps. What's your nickname? <laughs> butt lips chaps. Butt lips. You got, That's disgusting. You, no, no, but 
come on. Hey, but, it's 2019. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. This I can understand if it was rated. 1952 and you said butt lips, chaps. <laughs> butt lips. Hell, back then, even if you would have said damn, you'd go well, straight they, to hell. You know what? In the Mary Tyler Moore show, which was the Dick Van Dyke show back then, Mary, he was... No, that was the Dick Van Dyke yeah, show. Yeah, the Mary right, Tyler right, Moore right. show was different. Yeah. But do you know that they had two single beds in their bedroom? Yeah. They didn't sleep together. Why not? Because you, you didn't do that back then. Lucy didn't put out. Lucy? Yeah, wasn't it Lucy who Dick Van Dyke was shagging? Not Lucy. He was Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore? That's a different show. No, no, but sh that's where she came from. She came from the Dick Van Dyke show. She's the daughter of Lucy and Dick. <laughs> Every, everybody's the daughter of Dick. <laughs> Ooh, no, that's bad language. No, no, I'm just saying a fact here. Uh-huh. Here's Laura McCollum with the news. Here's what's making cannabis headlines this Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. Canopy Growth Corp has completed an all-cash transaction to purchase a majority stake in BioSteel Sports Nutrition. BioSteel is a producer of sports nutrition products. The transaction provides Canopy Growth with a significant platform to enter the sports nutrition and hydration segment and lays the groundwork for the adoption of CBD in future product offerings. Canopy Rivers has completed a U.S. $10 million investment in TerraSend Canada. The investment includes the purchase of 13,243 units, with each unit consisting of one unsecured convertible debenture with a principal amount of $1,000 and 25.2 common share purchase warrants. TerraSend is the first and only cannabis company with sales in Canada, the U.S. and Europe. Flower One Holdings has initiated its West Coast expansion. At 455,000 square feet, Flower One's existing Nevada facility is the largest cannabis greenhouse and production facility in the state. Plans for California entry will see the company leverage the many cannabis-specific operational proficiencies and manufacturing methodologies it has developed in Nevada. Gabby Inc. has signed a definitive agreement to acquire all issued and outstanding securities of two Rise Naturals in an all-share transaction valued at USD 1 million. The proposed transaction will enhance Gabby's portfolio of CBD products and is a natural fit with Gabby's current portfolio of CBD products, Lulu's Chocolate, and the Sonoma-specific CBD skin line. Two Rise has gained market popularity for its transparency in sourcing and only using top-quality certified organic ingredients. Kylie Terra Therapeutics announced that the European Patent Office has issued a notice of allowance for EU patent covering the use of CBD in the treatment of graft-versus-host disease. Kelly Terra has exclusive worldwide rights to this patent through an exclusive license agreement with MOR Research Applications of Israel. Neptune Wellness Solutions is actively pursuing a product development collaboration with International Flowers and Fragrances to co-develop hemp-derived CBD products for the U.S. market. Westleaf has signed amendment agreements in two of its existing credit facility commitment letters with ATB Financial, resulting in an additional $5.7 million of capital available for use by the company. Westleaf has increased its term loan on the plant, its fully completed extraction, manufacturing and product formulation facility by $2.7 million and has secured a $1 million revolving credit facility to assist with working capital. And that's your news for today. To keep up to date with all things cannabis, visit the Cannabis Daily on MidasLetter.com. Yeah, so what do you think of that, Edward? News. Well, Big new, news. News every day. News every day. Um, I wanted to show something that uh, I'm going to show anyways, even though I was just told that I was wrong, which I don't believe, but I will concede that I might be a little bit wrong here. Um, a little bit wrong? A little bit wrong. Did you think there was such a thing? So I'm looking at here a chart, and the chart is of the large cap index. And these grayed out zones are the major corrections since January 20, 2018. I want to point out that as of today at 5,800, the average of the 10 largest cap companies has us trading at where we were only in January 2018, less than two years ago. So whereas the appearance of a route is superficial in the short term, the fact of the matter is, is that we're merely back where we were two years ago, which is not really a route so much of it is just a serious correction. Well, except we're in a, in a nascent industry. Wouldn't you agree? 
Yeah, yeah. Is that, well, what, you're, is that what your, group, your head going up? No, now? Uh, not really nascent. We should anymore. be bob We should have bobbleheads on the show. We are bobbleheads. Bobbleheads. No, no. The point is, it's two years of a of a of a, a growth industry, brand new, and here it is back to where we were. I don't think you see that if it's a if it's a real. I could be mistaken. Well, like take the liquor industry for example. Yeah. <laughs> when liquor became deprohibited. In right. 1939. Do you think the charts all just 1939. went 1939? Like 29. 28? Somewhere in there. Yeah. I, I Whatever. wasn't around. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I can't matter. remember you because can. it wasn't here. Yeah. Anyways, <coughs> if we were to look at the chart of Seagram's, for example, like what year did it become a public company? I, well, is this a trick question? Well, you, you were around then. I was? <laughs> Weren't you? Well, it was, as long as it was up past 1880. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? All right. You heard her rat. All right. I, you know what? Let's pull up a chart of Seagram's. How back? How far back do you think the chart can go? Well, where, where, where can we see the furthest back chart, do you think? Well, does Seagram still trade? I don't know. I don't think so. What, what are we doing What here? is it, private? They still make whiskey. But it's probably under a, 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 like a company like Constellation or yeah. one, of, one of these big... Uh, Tell you what. Let's look up Seagram's right now and see what the deal is. Yeah. And while Seagram's you're doing escapes. that, what? Seagram's Alcohol Industry Company it was a Canadian multinational conglomerate. Somebody's calling me right in the middle of the show. I'm going to have to refuse that. Seagram Company was a Canadian multinational conglomerate, formerly headquartered in Montreal, Quebec. Originally a d Canadian distiller of whiskey in Waterloo. It was once the largest owner of alcoholic beverages in the world. Can you believe that? Yeah. Seagram's. Well, that was founded by the Bronfmans, correct? Yeah. No, Joseph Seagram. Okay. In 1857, Joseph Seagram partnered up with George Randall, William Ross, and William Hespler. Really? Yeah. Did they do it in Hespler? Yeah. Um, did you know that they, well, so they started long before the uh, prohibition. Prohibition of what? Whiskey. Yeah, there, there wasn't even a prohibition back then. Well, there was back then. Well, not in 1820. No. 1918, not in 1857. Right. So there was no prohibition back prohibition then. Prohibition started in the 1900s. Did it? 1900 and what? I think about 1916. No, I say 1922. Really? I don't. I, I, that's a good question. Any of our readers can. When did prohibition start and end in the United States? When did prohibition start and end in Canada? Now, this is an interesting thing. I happen to know those factors. They, they never. It never started in Canada. Anyways, that's for our studio audience to uh, give us the intel on. There's your. There's your assignment. There's your work for the day. Let's see who's in the studio audience. I better log on and check that out. I haven't even, don't even know. For all I know, I'm talking to myself. Right. Oh, let's see. Your channel. Here we go. Oh, 50 people watching. Hello, you 50. How you doing? How you doing? That's, are you guys the nifty 50? They could be. Uh, JG. Hello, JG. Mary Kemp. Hello, Mary Kemp. Nika Domi's there. Hello, Nika. Uh, JG, Nika Domi, Mary Kemp, Brock N, ceased operations in 2000. Hmm. Uh, JG says, you think they would talk cannabis? I, I think today being a turnaround day. Turnaround? Well, the, the, like, weed's up 75 cents after it was down $2. I'm looking at, oh, okay, it is, a, there's a green candle for sure. Okay, yeah. so it's October the day. That it turns around. Look at that. The, the large cap index is up 6.43% on the day. Are we getting close to the anniversary? Uh, we are. Yeah. Legalization. Yeah. Wow, a year gone by. The, yeah, all the indexes are highly green. To, they've all turned around huge. Uh, the CSE index is up 6%. The minus letter small cap index is up 5.2%. The large cap is up 4.86. And yeah. the uh, venture is up 2.08. So, yeah. Big reversal there, so maybe this is the bottom, maybe this is the reversal, or maybe this is just this, a This, this is pounds. a definite change in direction. We just don't know how long the trend is, but a new trend, it looks like, has started. And yesterday on the show, you were in here. Yeah. 
we talked about this being like the, the, there was so much pessimism. Prices were so low. Look, look Chiron got down at 94 cents, now back to almost $1.20. That's a big move. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Five, I think uh, Aurora was down to 505, now about 570. Look at that line right here. That's from like May 2019 all the way down. Now we look at the same line starting in May 2019 on the large cap. This uh, small cap looks a little bit messy because... Uh, Additions and deletions. Well, in this quarter, there were so many companies that failed to be small cap and moved over to the large cap. Right. But uh, yeah, the, the you know everything everything went lower. Look, this one this one went so far down it went way the hell over there. <laughs> like, they had to put an extra chart back over here. Yeah. To get it all on one. Uh, but now they're all going to go like this. How about that? Higher. Where did where did the line go? It disappeared. Look at that. Up, up, and away. Ta-da! That's my new little line marker on the screen. Yeah. Did you yeah. like that? Anyway, so we spoke to Peter Dazzler about the state of the uranium industry. Let's have a quick chat and see how Edward talked about with him. What? That? If you like the show, you'll love our website. Visit us at www.midasletter.com for interviews with key CEOs, cannabis news, and to subscribe to our newsletter. Jo joining me now, uh, Peter Dazzler, President and CEO of Canalaska Uranium, ticker Charlie Victor Victor. Uh, Peter, welcome to the show. Excellent to be here, Ed. Uh, we've done a lot of work this summer, and I certainly want to be able to update people on where we're going uh, over the next six months. Yeah, now I, I don't, uh, I haven't really been paying much attention to the uh, uranium uh, uh, area. I sort of, I know that the, the, the price of uranium is quite, it was quite low. Is it still quite low? Is it, has it moved up at all? The, the problem is it hasn't been moving. Uh, supply has been dropping off. Uh, producers have been shutting down plants. But there was such a hangover uh, after the Fukushima event. Everyone had geared up to produce a lot of uranium, and that just didn't slow down. Right. However, in 2018, we came to a balance. Uh, we're now producing more electricity from nuclear than we produced from before Fukushima, and we're seeing a larger build-out of nuclear power plants around the world. Not so much in North America. We've got about three going here with some small ones uh, being tested now. But if you go through Asia or through uh, the Arab states uh, and through Europe, you're seeing a big build-out of nuclear power plants. So that means more uranium is needed. Now is the, is the and, and there's a lot of lot of this is a very topical area. We could talk about a lot of different things, but um, the the now I've been reading that some of the the, the uh, reactors that are being built now are are, are they building smaller reactors? Uh, uh, yes, they are. They they are planning to build smaller reactors. Yeah. Uh, but they have built uh, some innovative situations. Uh, the Russians, uh, two months ago, launched the first floating nuclear power plant and moved that up to a city in Siberia. They're going to have cheap electricity. They're going to have a lot of hot water to, to heat buildings. Uh, and now we're seeing that the Chinese will put their first floating plant into uh, production uh, in December this year. Now, these aren't large plants. There are 100 to 150 megawatt plants uh, compared to the gigawatt plants that you see, you know, as, the, as in the big uh, industrial uses. But there are even smaller ones than that. Uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, Buffett uh, talking about building 30 to 50 to 70 megawatt plants, which will, uh, are ideal for small, supplying small communities way in the north or isolated locations. Now, the cost of the electricity from those is not going to be too much different from a large nuclear power plant, but it's still going to be in that 7 to 15 cents a kilowatt hour right. compared to a lot of, lot of other alternatives. Okay. 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 So let, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, Can Alaska. Uh, Can Alaska, now I, I looked at it briefly. Now you, you have a, par uh, a partnership with, with Cameco, correct? 
That's correct. Uh, we have uh, several partnerships uh, and, and sort of let's say our business where project generators, but the largest one is with Cameco on a project called West MacArthur. It's a large uranium property next door to their biggest uh, uranium mine, their biggest, richest uranium mine, uh, MacArthur River. And we have had some significant discovery holes on that project uh, in the last two years. And over the last month, we have announced more discovery holes. So we think we're well positioned for uh, a new discovery uh, with all of the infrastructure and all the benefits that come with a partnership with a company like Cameron. And, and that's, now the, there's the, the Athabasca region is the most, uh, the highest, the richest uranium area. If you're going to find uranium, you want to find it there, correct? Is that the idea? Well, certainly you can make a lot of profit from these very, very high-grade mines in the Athabasca. You know, they're in the lowest quartile producers of uranium around the world. Um, they have grades that run... 10 to 15 percent uranium uh, compared to anyone else, uh, you know, in the one or less than one percent or 0.1 percent. Um, they are not the lowest cost producers. Uh, in uh, uh, Kazakhstan, we have uh, um, disseminated uranium in the sandstones and they can pump that out of the ground. But certainly to supply the amount of uranium that's needed for the nuclear power plants, being in the lowest quartile uh, with these very high-grade mines is a sure. great place to be. Uh, we've got stability, uh, political stability, and we've got lots of opportunities to find more mines. Right, right. Uh, uh, so now I, I, I look and I see there's only about 50 million shares in your company. Is that right? 45, 50 million? 45 million shares. Uh, the company's been around uh, over 25 years, and uh, we've, we've generally uh, have funded ourselves from uh, selling projects, uh, uh, being operators on projects, uh, very, very cautious with the funding uh, that we've taken in, and uh, usually uh, we've had other larger groups uh, fund our exploration projects. Right now, this summer, we funded our own project, uh, $2 million under the ground at West MacArthur, because we knew we could advance it, and we ended up with uh, six more drill holes with uranium mineralization in them, and some very high-grade uranium, as well as a lot of, uh, we're starting to see now as the assays come in, a lot of copper and zinc, uh, multi-percent copper and zinc, that uh, adds to the picture of a discovery for us. Right, right. Now, did you ever did you ever roll your stock back, or were you able to do this on the? Uh, uh, it's quite impressive that you don't have two hundred million shares outstanding, like a lot of companies. You know, they keep raising money, they keep spending the money, they raise more money, and they end up having a lot of shares outstanding. But forty five shares is very forty five million shares is very manageable. We, we did change the structure of the company in 2010 uh, to get a listing on the Toronto Exchange, and we were listed uh, on the Toronto Exchange. Our share price needed to be over a dollar, and we consolidated our 13 cent shares to a dollar 30, uh, but uh, finance after that at a dollar 60. Okay, uh, it was we were trading at a dollar 60 uh, when Fukushima happened. So right today at 25 cents, you're seeing that company that was consolidated in advance and went on the main board of the Toronto Exchange. Uh, it wasn't a, a, a rollback uh, to uh, to restart the company. It was just progressing the company. Right, right, right. Now, you, you've, you're also doing some, some things in the nickel area, I understand. Well, because the uranium market has been slow for some time, uh, we had a, a, a group of engineers that that had looked at a number of other projects for us. Uh, our team is, uh, has concentrated on Canada, and we saw that the, the nickel opportunities um, that exist in Manitoba were quite staggering. Uh, this uh, area was the fifth largest nickel producing area in the world, and uh, now we've seen that there's no uh, other exploration been going on there since 2005, and so we acquired some ground we drilled some test holes. We hit over 10% urea, uh, 10 nickel in those drill holes. And now we're out looking for partnerships to help us because nickel, this sulfide nickel is very important for batteries. If you want to run your electric vehicle 
then you're probably going to need a lot more nickel in those batteries. Uh, currently now we're seeing 80% nickel in those batteries, and the more you can get into it, the more energy you can store. So sulfide nickel deposits are becoming very topical. The nickel price has soared over the last six months, and we're sitting now with uh, about half a million acres of land in the Thompson Nickel Belt. Uh, we bought a, an old nickel mine, a very high-grade nickel mine, and we just drilled uh, north of there and hit this very high-grade nickel. And we have two other projects that we're working on right now. Uh, they pale in comparison to what we've done in, in uh, the nuclear uh, end with the uranium and the Athabasca, but I think they're very strategic for the company. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now tell me, who, who are the major shareholders of, of, of uh, Can Alaska? Like, for instance, did you have some institutional shareholders, management, uh, et cetera? Well, management's always had uh, 10 to 12 percent of this company. Uh, but this year we bought in a group uh, that was that was headed by Sprott, uh, Sprott Global. And uh, so those clients in Sprott um, uh, own around about 15 percent of the company. Management has about 10 percent of the company right now. And uh, we have, uh, I think we just had 30% support at our AGM. So uh, we've got a, a loyal group of shareholders uh, that have been with us to see this discovery phase. Uh, the institutional group there is now spearheaded by Sprott and, uh, and management has a significant stake in this company. Yeah, I, I followed uh, the mining sector uh, off and on for, for, for decades. And I'd have to say right now is one of the toughest times uh, to get a to get a reasonable valuation, I mean, I'm just calling a spade a spade and saying, uh, you know, I can show you all kinds of deposits. Nobody seems to care, but that's usually the opportunity, right? You buy you buy them when everything's on sale. I know you you mentioned Sprott, uh, the company, but but there's also Eric Sprott. He's he's put a lot of money into uh, into mining deals uh, recently. Uh, and I know he, he did put some money into a nickel deal recently. Well, Ed, you know, you have to be contrarian in this business to get the edge for your shareholders. Um, as a project generator, we look, uh, you know, three or four or five years out trying to anticipate what's going to be in demand. And then we go and acquire the projects. Uh, in Canada, it's very fortunate. We have a huge database of information and we can draw on that to select good pieces of ground. Uh, that's how we still maintain one million acres of land in the Athabasca Basin for uranium. Uh, that's why we have a large position uh, on, in the Nickel District in Manitoba. But we acquired all of those years ago. Now the market's coming and saying we need more uranium, we need more nickel. Uh, it hasn't got to the, the frenzy that we saw in 2005 and six for uranium, but I think that's coming rapidly. Yeah. Uh, we see over, uh, you know, four or five hundred uh, million pounds of uranium that's short right now that's uh, in demand. Uh, we see the demand for probably another large uranium mine every year to be discovered to satisfy that demand. And uh, I, I'm quite happy to have Count Alaska positioned in front of that and wait for the crowd to come. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Okay, so I guess I guess uh, uh, yeah, the, the 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 thing about these things they they don't turn when you want them to necessarily, but they eventually they do turn, and we're starting to see evidence that metals, you know, gold, gold certainly surged here in the last uh, you know three, four, five months. Uh, looks looks like it's on a breakout pattern. You know, you think the world seems to be slowing down in some of the in Germany, for instance. It looks a little a little uh, difficult. It should be very interesting going forward. Well, I look at the fundamentals. Uh, you know, China has expanded tremendously over the last 10 years. The, the, the rail networks uh, rival the interstates that we have uh, that exist in the United States. These are high-speed 200-mile-an-hour uh, trains. You can't run them without electricity. You can't build that infrastructure without uh, with steel to make those rails. You can't build buildings without having the copper in them. And I can see a huge deficit uh, in that situation right now as the build out continues. Yeah. Resources uh, being consumed by China at a huge rate. 
we have great supplies of resources in North America, especially in Canada, and we have these very high-grade uranium mines where you can make a lot of money by, uh, by, by selling to these world markets. Now, it's not just China. It's India, it's Pakistan, sure. it's Saudi Arabia, it's, it's across the world. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so it's coming, and yeah. uh, I'm prepared to wait. The electrification, I've seen these cycles before. the electrification of the world's upon us. Yes, you know it, it's 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 amazing that North America isn't crisscrossed with 200 mile an hour uh, train networks. But as soon as that starts to happen, the consumption of uh, of steel uh, uh, and copper and nickel will just go crazy. Yeah, and uh, and I'm excited for that. Yeah, 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 Peter. Uh, Great interview. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we're going to leave it there and we're going to have you back at some point. Aaron will. Let's talk about Aurora. Recently, your financials, you mm -hmm. more or less delivered. Here are the headlines moving markets today. Yeah, if you're lucky to buy it uh, three days ago at 37 cents. And I you think it has a it. lot to do with uh, some of these smaller names giving. Really Recreational cannabis is here. It's yeah. quite dry. So I'm going to eliminate the stocky bits. For all the shit that you. I'm going to be shoveling a lot of shit, Edward. Yes, you are. Yes, indeed. So that was interesting. So there are still uranium companies uh, out there toiling well, he, away. The interesting thing, if, if, if when I gather, when I talk about commodities, you know, it's always about supply and demand. And, and he said that 2018 supply equaled demand. That's the first thing that has to happen before the price can turn. Because there, what after that Japan fiasco inventories which one fuji the one in japan the one Fujimori. Eh, whatever the yeah. dictator who cut off the nuts of all the insurgents in peru cut off the nuts <laughs> well, you know are you testing my about. testes <laughs> no look at look at look at look at, look at. <laughs> if uranium starts to get a bid yes it can move but then we know we're, look at there's a do you know that oil now is a, about a dollar fifty a barrel lower than before the drone strike? It's, it seems as though the world is awash in oil, natural gas, and I guess the as and the weed and the, as the Don't world slows weed. down. Well, who's the what province buys less legal weed than any other? BC. You read you read the article. Nope. Yes, you you had to. I didn't. Well, you got the right answer. I used to live in BC because it's all underground, right? Well. That's just it. The, do you know the lowest uh, instances of per capita usage of the legal stores in, in Canada? BC. BC. Well, that, well, I just asked you that. No, you asked me where the lowest <laughs> well, instances of that legal go, cannabis that, that, use That was. goes hand in. Like, for instance, well, those no, two things. Ten those guys show up and buy 50 tons. You see, there's two hands, and they're going hand in hand. <laughs> Is that what's going on? <laughs> Now you're making no sense whatsoever. No, no, they're going <laughs> hand in hand, and same idea. Really? Uh, so it works out to about a dollar per person in BC. CS uh, cannabis sales. What do you call it there? CSB? No. Cannabis sales. CSB. CBS. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, okay, I'm having a mental lapse here. Sorry. <laughs> Help oh, me out here. OCS. Uh, OCS. Oh, no, in BC, it's in, the BCS. Okay, but, but it's a dollar per person in BC. You know yes. what it is in PEI? What? About 10 bucks a person. So they're, they're buying. Spending. They're spending 10 times more per person in legal at stores than they are in BC. No kidding. And they, they all they said was, yeah, it's in today's paper. And uh, uh, Ontario's doing pretty good too, but BC, eh, they just keep doing it the way they've been doing it. Really? Some of the best pot comes from BC, doesn't it? Uh, I would say that the best indoor grown pot in Canada prior to legalization always reliably came from British Columbia because that's where everybody and their dog was growing it because that's where the cops were really turning a blind eye. In fact, we had the former, uh, he wasn't, he was the, he was the, uh, not the commissioner, but the supervisor, 
not supervisor, there's another word. Anyways, for the city police, Cash was his name, and he was here telling us that he hey, was... Was that was his game Cash too? Cash was his name, Cash was his game. And anyways, he was the one, he said he was the one who was giving the order to Vancouver police to turn a blind eye to cultivation because it was not worth processing the people because it, they'd get to court and would, they'd get a slap on the wrist. So for the resources it was consuming in the police department, that's where the whole movement started for law enforcement to stop enforcing cannabis cultivation laws because the courts were not giving down sufficiently right. harsh sentences right. to make it worthwhile. They were giving them a slap on the wrist and saying goodbye. At least that's what Cash was saying back then. Why don't we look at the S&P today? What for? I want to talk about I want to talk about this this big development today. All right. In the technical world. Right. And uh, and while I get the chart up, maybe you could uh, sing a song and dance or something. Sing a song? You're asking me to sing a song and dance? Okay. So look look at this, folks. This is what I'm talking about. And we've we've if you've been watching the show at all, I said here all time high right there. Failure here. Notice the congestion from here to here. Now we've had the congestion from here to here. Congestion? That's well, a new term. Uh, not a resistance. technical term? Resistance. Congestion. You can't, can't get through. It's not easy to get through. Oh, like a traffic jam. Traffic jam. And in August, all, this, all this support. Support. Because yeah. it's... Support? Support. 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 Now, now, look. We are now back... That's clearly above the, that, that's clearly above, you think I'm drawing a picture of a funny dog or something. Yeah. But look at this, today. That's one badass that, candle. That, that is a begin, that, that, that's a, har I believe a harbor now. A harbor? A harbinger. Harbinger. I like to shorten the words up, you know. You know. Yeah. I figure you don't yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it, but apparently don't. Oh, I get it. Harbinger this could death. be, this could be. You know what? That's we're, we we're talking about. We're talking about names for candles. I'm going to coin the term "harbinger of death." Harbinger of death. Ooh. Financial ruin. Financial death. Financial death. Just harbinger to be, of let's, financial ruin. Let's not ruin. confuse the financial death. Financial death. So what you're predicting? This, the financial uh, death. What of I'm the saying is that, that we're going to maybe back and fill here because it's a pretty steep drop. I see a bit of a nice tail. Forming, which Thank you. usually suggests that the low is in for a while. Yeah, but yeah. but I think we may we may rally back into this range in here, uh -huh. and then roll over, and then the big the big Kahuna will be if we break that 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 major <coughs> resistance in August. Because remember, we're yep. talking about all time highs. We're talking about companies still the the big ones. Microsoft, Apple. We're tr this week we're a trillion dollar. Yes. Companies, right? So, so much going on, and yet we had this happen, and your friend pointed it out to you too. Mm -hmm. That that's that is bad. That is bad. bad. I'm just going to say it. So, if you got any, if you're a trader, you're long, whatever, you may want to take someone off the table. No kidding, eh? Okay, I've said enough. That's all you've got to say. Um, what's happening in the United States with Donald Trump and the uh, impeachment process? Well, he, he said there was a. Uh, they, they, he, he likened it to Democratic bullshit or something. He actually oh. they used the word bullshit. Really? And they saw the screen. I heard that he uh, he wanted to shoot people. Shoot them? Yeah. What? In the Ukraine. And uh, they said they couldn't shoot them because it, it was illegal. And he was asking if he could just shoot them in the legs. You heard that? Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, he's probably kidding. Probably. Although, you never know with him. Um, Bernie Saunders, down for the count had some uh, stents inserted into his open artery blockage. He's canceled all events. Well, maybe you should eat uh, eat better. Well, I think it's a little late in the game for that. For <laughs> is him. He got, is he up, has he got some problems? Well, he not anymore. They've got stents now. Okay, so, so he's already out of the race? Uh, I don't know if he's out of the race officially yet, but certainly I don't think that he's going to attract a lot of votes if he's looking like, uh, you know, he's not going to go the distance. So I think that just accrued to Elizabeth Warren's uh, sort of chances. Is she is she the, the the sort of in the same side of the political spectrum? You mean wing wing nut left? Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, we, we. <laughs> yeah, they all want to give shit away. Um, well, you know what though? You could you could argue like uh, 
one of the highest tax countries is Denmark, everything's free. And if you make like a lot, a lot of money, you pay 95% of it in tax. Why would you bother? I don't know. I Who don't stays around and says, yep, okay, you take 95% of my money and give I it know, to all those I bums know. over there. I know. I know. And you know what happens ultimately? The people that are the, the people that get things done and do. Yeah. They'd leave. They leave. You they go to Ireland or something and work out a deal. Do you know who Ambrose Evans Pritchard is? No. He's the economic writer for the Telegraph, UK paper. Anyways, okay. he's one of the sharper guys in terms of economic commentary and watching what's going on in other countries that portend that are harbingers of doom in other locations. And last night, uh, I read his piece in uh, the Telegraph and he was pointing to the, the Swedish PMI index as being, uh, having broken through a major barrier to the downside below the break-even stage. And he suggested that it usually uh, precludes an equal response in all of the major economies in Europe by about two months. So Precedes. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, Sweden's a two-month look into the future of the rest crystal of Europe. Crystal ball. Well, it's not a crystal ball. I, I'm using... It's a harbinger. It's a harbinger. Canary in a coal mine. Yeah, yeah. Portend. Portend. Not pretend. Not pretend. Portend. Okay, so, 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 and what is it? It's saying, well, look, look. It's saying that we, the, uh, just, Europe's going into a major recession. Okay, so, so, w look at the things we, that have happened, okay? And let's, just one at a time, we'll, we'll, we'll mention, uh, we'll mention that the, the manufacturing numbers were the worst in 10 years yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the state of the Ger German banks. Mm -hmm. Uh, rates keep going. They say it's going to lower. It's mm -hmm. going to destroy the banking industry. There's a lot of people that don't want that to happen. So the automobile true. sales are slowing down dramatically. Oh, there's oil is going lower, way lower. You know, uh, natural. You know, you know. <sighs> I know it's ugly. Well, you know what? But we've had a run. We've had a run, and yet. When when we have the run, we don't take it. We don't feel like it's a run. When we have the runs. Yeah. Okay. Um, All anyways, right. so but the, so this is the thing. He's saying, "Oh Jesus, what's going on with my?" Well, I'm going to put up. I'm going to put up the price of gold here. Okay, you do that. I'm. Uh, okay, so we can chat now for a bit while you're ticking around. Just uh, action today a after the bad numbers. Gold staged a dramatic r rally and 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 further further gains, and followed by a little bit of a gap up today. Another green candle. Uh, we've gained back already from the bottom. You know, close to forty bucks. No kidding. Yeah, forty bucks. Uh, maybe, maybe thirty-five, but doesn't doesn't matter. That mini trend looks like it's been breached now. So we're going like that. But we we've seen a seesaw kind of, you know, this is happening. Main thing I want to say is after that $200 move, gold, if anything, is, is drifting a little higher. Hmm. Okay, that, that's all I'll say there. Okay? Okay. Uh, great, okay, so then um, gold's higher, the S&P is lower. The problems in the repo market, they're starting now to extend regular $100 billion uh, term Operations as opposed to overnight operations, yeah. demonstrating in no uncertain terms that liquidity is drying up at the Fed. Something, something is definitely uh, awry here or miss or something like that. Uh, you're talking about the interest rate thing, and when the world starts to look like it's contracting, it you know rates naturally. You know people move their money into government securities, driving. The cost of money. In mm -hmm. other words, uh, interest rates go lower. You know. Yeah. You buy. You, you, bond price goes up. Yield goes down. And so, so I don't know. This this seems to be like we're in the ultimate conundrum here. Conundrum. What? What? How? How are they going to get out of this one? Like rates are. They, they've driven rates so low. You know. You've got. Uh, I, I. I sound exasperated. Maybe flabbergasted. Flummoxed. Flummoxed. I'm, I'm, you know, what the hell? I know. So, okay, so let's see. And the marijuana space catched a nice bid today. Yes, it did. 
So let's assume that today is the day that the marijuana space actually stages a reversal. And the reversal is a meaningful temporal reversal. It's not a dead cat bounce. Let's say that the just the consensus in the space is that it's oversold and now there's going to be an accumulation phase. Which are going to be your top picks for acquisition, Ed? The top three companies. I would have to say, I would have to say, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know them intimately, but I would look at the ones with the biggest volumes, and I would, I would go with those, with the ones with the biggest liquidity, with biggest liquidity, and and a, a trend of improving fundamentals. In other words, quarter by quarter, companies growing. You think of a True Leaf down in, uh, in, uh, in the U.S. I want to take a look at that. Let's take a look at that right now. Yeah. But cool. you know, every time we talk about a U.S. deal, it's somewhat different than a Canadian deal, isn't it? Yeah. Like, just because of the different regulations, and so you're, you, it's almost you're comparing donuts uh, to lemons donuts. to limes. Oh. Hey, similar. Lemons to limes. Similar. But, but not the same. Not the same. I'm going to pick Harvest Health and Recreation as my top pick for the uh, okay. rebound. Okay. The reason being, Harvest Health and Recreation has been extra beat up because it's subject to uh, a, a Department of Justice uh, examination of its acquisition of Verano and, uh, and uh, Falcon, which uh, on anti-competitive grounds. If, if those two transactions, if the transactions were allowed to occur, which th we will know whether they're not going to or not probably by the end of this month, then Harvest Health and Recreation will be the largest MSO in the United States, over 200 stores in operation and exposure to total addressable market of over 145 million Americans. I, uh, I, I mentioned TrueLeaf, and I just want to bring this up because we've had some you know, bad day in the S&P, but look, look at this. Today's candle. You didn't even ask to look at my chart. I'm going to look at your chart. But I, I already don't let you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Look at, look at this. We had a low here. We had a nice rally. We had a correction. This correction, though, was not as low as that one. Mm -hmm. and, and today, look at that action. Up a couple of bucks, looks like. Well, maybe not. You can't tell what it's up, but it's 11.45. Looks like it got down. Well, I guess maybe it up about 75 cents today. It doesn't matter. The point is, here's one that's attracted attention. So I, I would probably take a hard look at this company. And the one you, can I put up the chart of the company you mentioned? No. Is it too late? No. I'm unforgiven? No, no, I have it up. Okay. Okay, well, I got good. it up. Okay. Um, anyways, so this is, uh, this is Harvest Health and Recreation, symbol H-A-R-V. What, what time frame? Uh, this is, well, this is the one day, so let's, uh, let's pull out to three months here. Oops, wait a sec. Okay. Now let's pull up our little chart thingy. And uh, yeah, so this company basically high, uh, well, it paused for a bit back in September and then proceeded to drop down here to $3.50. And now it has caught a bid and it's up at 407. Look at that. So it broke through its base there. Yeah and set a new low, but now it's reversing. So now this is why, I, if we back out here, let's go back out, so this is three months out, let's go back to the year to date, and it's all time high was, so this is a stock that's descended from 1420. So whereas most of the sector has lost about 50% in terms of valuation since the highs of May and April, this company has lost more like 80% of its value. Or sorry, let's call it sixty percent of its value. What 14, was the high? Fourteen fifty. Fort. What company is that? Harvest Health and Recreation. Holy smokes! And it touched a low of three seventy four. Today it's back up to four sixty. But anyways, so this thing got out, got hit with a sector wide weakness, but it also got hit with the fact that it's being looked at from a legal from the Department of Justice on any competitive. What do you grounds. think? The, what do you think this this this? Uh, what are the odds? 
Well, I think the Department of Justice being a corrupt organization essentially is essentially me messing with these companies, trying to block them from becoming too successful, too big, too soon. And uh, But ultimately, they don't really have a leg to stand on. How can you block a company that's you know on anti-competitive grounds? Yeah. Amazon. When it's a growing industry where there's not even sufficient supply to meet demand at this point. Right. In all of the markets. And even all the markets aren't even finished legalizing. So it's a complete farce on the part of the Department of Justice, in my view. And really, they're targeting these companies and trying to, you know, in the, in the American fashion, in the American context, teach them a lesson. Yeah. So I think yeah. that that's why I think that ultimately, Harvest Health and Recreation is going to rebound most sharply because it has been it, it's been oversold on multiple grounds not just one or two of the ones that everything else has been sold off on so that's my top pick that's okay. my story i'm sticking to it all right you like that i like it you do yeah there's been some there's been some good action there's been there's some money coming out uh the house democrats have vowed to subpoena the white house that's interesting yeah this this is you, getting you, you just when you think of what's going on, it, you, you, you think about how is that going to impact the financial markets, and you, you think, well, they're already in a state of contraction. It looks like mm -hmm. this can only add heaviness. Mm -hmm. You know what's the uh, word for like when you say that something is heavy, it's ponderous or something like that. Let's take a look at let's take a look at interest rates. I think interest rates. I think it's important to look at interest rates. What do you think? Yeah, well, you tell me what's going on in interest rates. I'll tell you whether I care. Well, as you'd expect, on a day where there's where there's a week where there's been bad economic, bad economic uh, news, it's hard to imagine or envision uh, rates. Be hard to envision anything unless we get this chart working. Yeah. Why doesn't that work? Well, you know what? I can't get my chart up. Can't get it up, Ed. What? Why is that? Come on! <laughs> come on! I've got some pills in my drawer that might help you. I already took those. <laughs> Did oh. you? Look at this. I can't. I can't get. It. Okay, I'll say this. The 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 peak the peak rate. Was about a buck ninety on the uh, ten year, back in here. Okay. Yeah. And it's now a dollar or one one. Uh, I think about one fifty seven or one fifty eight. So, why is that pen not working? Hmm. Maybe it's out of batteries. No, I don't know. It just stopped. Hmm. Huh. Huh. We got. We got. Okay. It's still working. It's still working on the screen. Oh. Oh well. All right. Darn it. So 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 rates rates are backing off, and if rates back off, this this makes gold the desirable commodity haven. Yeah. So at what point do you see gold exploding to two thousand dollars and above? That's what I want to know. Well, I, I spoke to a gentleman uh, this week who's very very uh, well well. Uh, I'm not going to mention names because I didn't ask permission. But the bottom line was they said that he's expecting a serious move to 17, 1800 starting very soon, maybe like the middle of October, and that that will get us very close to the old highs. And then, you know, that's as far as he would, would, would elaborate. But he said the same gentleman predicted the move from the 1300 to 1500. That, that just happened. Mm -hmm. So so his track record's pretty good at well, this like point. Well, you, you know what? Track records in this game, it's about, a, it's about your last call. Right. Right? That, that's, we, we all have a, attention spans of gnats. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah I, but you, 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 you must admit, we're just looking at these charts and seeing what we're talking about. Things look a little shaky. A little dicey. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, let's see. What gold is doing right now is, uh, whew. Let's take a look at Kirkland Lake, which is a, a big one. Gold is uh, 1498 Yeah, 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 yeah. Kirkland Lake, Kirkland Lake, which is, you know, a six, you know, 
they're, they're, this company prints. It's a mining producer. It print, prints money. It's had an unbelievable run over the last couple of years. There it is. Uh, it's now 60, 60 bucks. I'm not sure I know what the market cap is, but I'm pretty sure it's more than $10 billion. Uh, Eric Sprott owns a big chunk of this company. Uh, I wanted to say, it, it, now it, it's, I hope this works. Now you're crossing your fingers. Oh, there we go. That, that does look, suggest a bit of a top here. Uh, not saying it's a top, it could be just, you know, we've sort of saw it here too. You know, you see these where, where nothing really happens, but you know, there's no question. Look at that. So, so, so that's the, and, and what are we doing today? We're up a bit. Oh, we're up quite a bit. A couple bucks, looks like. Hmm. Uh, and and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and uh, put up, uh, uh, what's the one I, I saw it go by was up? The one, uh, C-Web. I want to get C-Web up. All right. While you're doing that, let's take a look at some of these indexes, starting with the Canadian Venture Index. Uh, biggest gainer over here, Calix Ventures, two cents. James E. Wagner tacked on 20%, which was only eight cents today, now trading at 49 cents. So there's very much a broad based recovery on as we speak. Harvest One Canada gained two cents up to 39. GTEC Holdings down at 25 cents was rose a penny. Uh, Chiron Life Sciences, $1.16 up seven cents, 6.42%. Even Co at 23 cents. So it looks like, I mean, there's really, there's really no sector-wide catalyst to explain no. the sudden lift in all cannabis stocks. It looks like just it's oversold and now the buying will begin. The, the sellers may have been exhausted. You, you, you'll often hear a technical person talk about when the selling, the selling gets done, if the buying remains the same, that's going to cause some lift. And what lift does, it makes the shorts nervous thinking that they should have covered earlier, mm -hmm. and now they're paying attention, so they start to jump in and propel it higher. Um, the only thing I will say about the marijuana space, I don't think we're gonna see what we saw a year ago, year and a half ago with spectacular moves, only because if you, if you look at, you know, spectacular moves happen when the stock's much higher. As the stock comes down, 10, 20% still a big move, but it, it it's like what you just mentioned with uh, the, the Wagner company, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. It's up, it's up, it's up leading the list. Yeah. It's up four cents. Hmm. Can't get too excited. No. All right. Well, so it can, now it would be great if we had a cannabis revival, cannabis prices reviving going into the final quarter of 2019 and a gold market. Geez, that would make Bay Street insane with glee. Boy, I'll tell you, you know, uh, you, you speak to the guys that have been around uh, Bay Street, and uh, when the mining sector's hot, it's, uh, it's high cotton. It's high cotton. When the mining sector's hot, it's high cotton. What do you think? Yeah. You like that one? Yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad. Um, okay, well, so... Uh, Wait, well, how much time we got? Like a minute and a half? Mm, Any, yes. Anybody talking about a stock they want to look at at uh, unusual volume? Well, let's see. Uh, Mr. Liu here is picking C-Web, GTI, T-R-U-L, yeah. Harvest, Health and Rec, and Cure Relief. But boy, yeah, today's the day to be buying, unless it's just a dead cat bounce. Okay, I, I noticed C-Web had a big move. That's another one that's got some, some great uh, operations going on. C-Web, that's Canadian or U.S.? Both. Uh, well, how's Aurora doing today? Let's take a look at Aurora. Pull up a chart of Aurora, will ya? Okay, forget about SeaWeb. <laughs> SeaWeb will be fine. Is that Sea Hunt or SeaWeb? Sea, sea what? Sea Hunt. Sea, sea what? Sea Hunt. Who are you calling a Sea show, Hunt? There used to be a show on television with Lloyd Bridges, who's Boy. the father of Jeff Bridges. Mm hmm. <clears throat> And it used to be called C. I can't make this shit up. C hunt like S E A hunt. Yeah. Well, what's so funny about that? Well, you could also argue the letter C hunt. 
Huh? Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> Forget C -H -U -N -T, it. C-H-U-N-T. Chunt. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Anyways, there's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back tomorrow with more fun and games and, of course, more cannabis commentary. Don't forget to subscribe at MidasLetter.com if you haven't already, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining.